Hey guys, Christy Velasquez here, and today I wanted to showcase the new stamping blends. These are brand new alcohol-based markers that um, Stamping Up released for customers to buy on November 1st. Um, so before I get into showing you techniques on how to color with them, I thought I would just talk to you about some of the basics, things that you need to know about these markers. There are a lot of videos out there from other Stamping Up demonstrators that kind of go through this too, but if you haven't seen any of those, it is um, beneficial to kind of just understand the basics of the stamping blends. So, there are 12 colors from the color families, um, and you can buy these individual, or you can buy them in a combo pack. So, this, for instance, is Old Olive, so you can buy each marker on its own, or you can buy them in a um, combo pack. So, there are 12 colors like this and then there are three additional markers that you can buy there is the um the color lifter and then there are two skin tones which let me see if i can find those really fast here is the ivory skin tone and then the bronze skin tone so these are sold individually so you have to buy these each separate they don't come in a pack or you can buy the entire the entire suite of markers um all in one all in one um price you get all 12 colors and then the three additional markers <clears throat> so something to note just some things to note about the markers is they are uh, rectangular so they don't roll so they won't roll off your work surface which is great because if you've ever been working with our stamping right markers which are great but you do see they roll and they can roll right off your desk <clears throat> so another cool thing about this is the caps stack on top of each other so when you're working with them you don't have to worry about losing the cap and um, so the combo pack, let me tell you a little bit about that. So when, or just the color family. So each color family has like, uh, not really color family, but the 12 colors that you can buy. Um, each has a light and a dark. So this is light old olive and this is dark old olive. The reason why there's a light and the dark is this allows you to add shadows and shading. Um, and sorry for my dog um, hacking up something in the background there, but um, this the dark allows you to add shadows and um, shading to your images. <clears throat> You'll also notice that the markers have a nib tip and a brush tip. Let me show you that here. So you see it has a, a nib tip for more precise coloring and to get into smaller places. And then on the other side, it has a brush tip. And this is for coloring larger images. Um, and I find that the brush tip puts out more ink than the nib tip. So if you're brand new to alcohol markers and stamping blends, I started practicing first with this um, this nib tip because it puts out less ink. So I was able to get the feel for the markers and learn how to control the ink um, better than I could with just out of the box using the um, brush tip. So um, what else about these markers? <clears throat> so they are alcohol based, which means um, they do soak through your paper, so it is important to use um, a thick Whisper White cardstock. I have used the thinner, I think it's 80 pounds, and that works too, but I find that the thick Whisper White um, allows you to get better blending and um, just seems to work better. I also have heard that you can use the shimmer paper. I have not tried that yet, um, but I plan on trying that in the future. And then a little bit later when I start getting into showing you the coloring. I'm also going to show you how you can color on vellum. So pretty cool. Okay, so now that I've talked through these things, let me tell you a little bit about the color lifter. This is definitely key for you to have if you're going to be working with the stamping blends. <clears throat> now it, it does do what it says. It does lift color, but you can also use this um, this color lifter to blend colors, to add highlights to your image, and just do all kinds of things with it. So this is an absolute must have. Even if you buy two, you just buy one set of the markers, you're going to want the color lifter because you can do so many different things with it. The color lifter is colorless. It again has the same um, nib tip and then the brush tip. Um, so you can get more uh, color lifter out with the brush than the nib. The nib you can get in there for more um, precise corrections of any errors that you might make. 
So this is a definite must have. <clears throat> then the other two, um, just separate markers, just I'll quickly mention, are what we're calling the skin tone. So it's a bronze and an ivory. I do find that these um, make great, uh, the, the bronze especially adds um, another brown color. So I've really been using this for things other than skin tone. And the ivory um, as well, it mixes really well with um, the pinks and, and things like that. So these are also really great to have in your stash. If you don't want to get all the markers at once, um, I would definitely get these three as an addition. Okay. So um, one other thing is I store all of my markers in this little bin here. You want to store them horizontally. You do not want to store them vertically. Um, that will make all the ink go to one side and they won't, they'll dry out and won't work right. So you want to make sure that you're storing them horizontally. So I just keep them all in here and dig through and look for the marker that um, I want to work with. So that's, that's another tip. Now, moving on to coloring. <clears throat> I've stamped out some images here using the best bird stamp set. I've got the birds and um, the branch and some flowers. So this is a card I made the other day. I used stamping blends to color all of the images here. And you can see that you get some really cool blending and shading. You see the, the flowers have some darker pink in the center and it fades out to the light. So these are really awesome markers. You can do tons of things with them and um, I love them. So let me kind of show you how I color these images. I'm not going to complete this card, but I will show you how I did a majority of the coloring on here. <clears throat> so let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can, if I can zoom in, there we go. I'll move my paper over here. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start with um, the branch. So for that, I'm going to use, like I said, um, this bronze because that works great for adding some browns. And then I'm going to use the, um, the light crumb cake and the dark crumb cake. Now I'm just digging through my pile over here to find my markers. All right, so these are the three that we're going to use for um, the branch. So I'm going to start with the light crumb cake and I'm going to use the nib end and I'm just going to color in this entire branch. And I'm going to try to do this quick so you don't have to sit here and watch me color forever and ever and ever. So I'm just going to quickly color in this branch with the light crumb cake. And then I'm going to come in with the dark crumb cake. <clears throat> and I'm going to add in where there would be shadows. So there's going to be shadow underneath the leaf, probably a shadow along the bottom, shadow along this branch and down here. And then what I'm going to do with the bronze... Now, you could leave it like that. Let me show you closer here. You do get some shadows and depths, but I'm going to add some more texture by using the bronze. And I'm just going to come in here with that same, um, the nib tip, and I'm just going to kind of add in like just flecks of bronze here and there, just to kind of give, you know, a little bit of different color spread out here. And that actually gives a whole um, new level of kind of dimension there. So you see how I did that? pretty quick. It makes it look a little more realistic. So that's the branch. Now you could come back over and color all of this over again with the light crumb cake. That would really blend all of this out, but you would lose some of the different colors and shading. So I liked coloring my branch like that. <clears throat> now for the leaves, I used the old olive set, the light and the dark, but then I also brought in the, um, the light daffodil delight. And you look at that and you think, what? How is that going to look good? But if you see, and if you can see the leaves, you do see that, that the Daffodil Delight does peek through um, in my coloring. And I really like the way that looks. So I typically will start, it depends on the image that I'm, that I'm coloring, but a lot of times I start with my darkest marker first. But in this um, instance, I know I'm going to cover up most of the yellow with the green. So I'm going to start with my yellow first. And I'm just going to color in where I feel like there would be the most light on the leaf. And that's where I'm going to add in my, my yellow. So I'm trying to um, do some, you know, realistic where shadows would be versus not. <clears throat> so then I'm going to come in with my dark next. So this is the dark old olive. And this is where I'm going to lay in, I'm going to lay in my shadows. So I know that it's, the leaf is going to be dark along here. 
this leaf is mostly going to be dark because it's underneath the branch. Same for here. And I'm just kind of trying to envision what it would look like in nature where the dark parts of the leaf would be. I'm just coloring here and adding that in. We know up this leaf is going to cast a shadow on this one, so the dark may come out a little further. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the light old olive and I'm going to blend all of this out. Now I'm going to be careful to not um, blend too much over the yellow so that I leave a peak of that out here and there. But I am completely cover, um, coloring over the, the dark that I added, the dark old olive that I added. Okay, and then for this leaf, I'm probably gonna leave the most yellow out of all of them, and there you go. So you'll see, so you can see there how I did that. Okay, so that's kind of showing you how to shadow and add some different colors. And one thing to note is you wanna put your caps back on after you use them every single time. You don't wanna leave the markers exposed to the air because that could cause them to dry out, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> so now, I want to show you some cool things with the colorless blender or the color lifter. I'm going to take dark Calypso Coral and then I'm going to take the light pink Pirouette. I'm going to color the flowers next. So again, I'm using the nib tip and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add this dark Calypso Coral to the center. And then I'm going to come in and add the light pink Pirouette. And you can see that just right off the bat, those aren't really blending that well. You can see the, the edges of the dark Calypso Coral really isn't blending into the, the pink pear wet's not really blending into the Calypso Coral. But that's where this really awesome color lifter comes in. So I'm just gonna take my color lifter and I'm just gonna go over it. The whole thing, both colors, and just kind of blend it. And you'll see that that actually helps those colors blend together. So that was cool. <clears throat> now onto the, the birds. And this is where we're going to really, I'm going to show you how you can really take three very different colors and um, still get what this to me still looks like a blended look. So I'm going to be using light smoky slate. Um, this is dark pool party. And then I'm going to be using... Uh, the light dark of the light uh, night of navy which is this one right here <clears throat> so I'm going to start with uh, my gray and like I said this is the light smoky slate and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna color the top part of the bird now I'm actually going to use the brush tip for this because I'm coloring a pretty large uh, surface here and I feel pretty confident with blending these markers out. I've been playing with them quite a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and come in here with the uh, brush tip and I'm going to color that in. Okay. The next I'm going to come in with the pool party. Again, I'm going to use my, the brush tip here. I'm just going to color this down to about right there. And you see it's not really blending yet, and you're probably thinking, oh gosh, that looks terrible. But I'm going to show you um, how to fix that. And then here I'm going to come into the bottom with the light night of navy. And I'm just going to bring that out through the tail. It's kind of hard to color standing up with the camera above me. Okay, so that right now, it looks okay, but it's not really blending. It kind of looks like a hot mess. So I'm going to come back with the... Um, pool party and I'm going to color into this night of navy bring that up into the gray and I'm going to come in with the gray and kind of color that down back into the night of Navy or the uh, pool party and then now I'm going to take my <clears throat> colorless blender again and this is where I'm going to use the brush tip on this and I'm going to just kind of go along where there's blend and just give it some some of this color lifter and that I find really blends this out and then I want to add some shadows to the wings and the bird's head so I'm going to come in here with the dark smoky slate I'm going to use the nib tip because I'm doing detailed work here <clears throat> and I'm just going to add some shadows along here 
underneath the eye. And I'm just gonna add some flicks on the wings to just give a little bit of different color definition here. And then you can use your color lifter to then highlight. So I'm gonna take the nib, the nib tip on the, on the color lifter and I'm just gonna come in here and lift some of this gray off just to really kind of give some some highlights to the bird and then that has you now if you don't like the way this looks you can come in a little bit more with the colorless blender and maybe blend it out a little bit here just to kind of soften it along here and you just work with it you don't want to overwork it because remember these are alcohol markers and they're saturating the paper that's how you're getting your blending so you don't want to overwork it to where it starts to bleed out um, so you just want to be careful with that I find if you stay a little bit away from your stamped edges, you won't get blend bleeding. But let's say you do. Let's say I was kind of getting crazy with my coloring, and I came over here and I colored outside of the lines like that. <clears throat> that's that's where your color lifter. That's the main um, the main way you use your color lifter is to fix mistakes. So when you do color out of the line like that, you want to come in ahead of the ink. So you want to get this ink moving towards your mistake because what happens, how this works is it's not really erasing it. It's the alcohol, the colorless alcohol ink in this blender is pushing that ink that you colored outside of the lines back into the stamped image. Hopefully that makes sense. But that's how it works. And you see that, <clears throat> that uh, clean that up really nicely. And if you find you're having a hard time, just come back and work it again and again. Now, if you have a huge mistake where um, you really went crazy with the marker, you might not be able to use that color lifter to, collect, to correct it. But in a lot of cases, um, this will correct any of your boo-boos. So that is, um, that is that card. So that shows you how I color the images for this card. So one more thing before I finish this video, I wanted to show you something really cool is vellum. You can color with these alcohol markers on vellum. And the cool thing is, is that they dry really quickly. So um, you don't have to worry about, you know, if you use your Stampin' Write markers, um, these have a tendency to, they don't dry on vellum. So you have to use your heat tool and it doesn't always work, but these alcohol markers work awesome. So I have heat, uh, white heat embossed the same, this bird from that same stamp set. And what I'm going to do is so I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna color on the back of the bird. So I'm gonna bring, um, I'm gonna use dark colors for this. The darker the marker, the better it shows through on the front. So I'm going to use, um, this is the Dark Knight of Navy and I'm just gonna color it in. And the great thing about using embossed images like this is you really can't see your coloring from the front so you don't have to worry about being as precise when you're coloring on the back. And so now I'm going to bring in the, my dark, mm, I'll use the dark daffodil delight. I'm going to just color along here. Now this might not show up as, as much as the blue because, you know, it is, you know, it's yellow, it's lighter, but we'll see what we get here. All right, flip it over. And let me get in a piece of white paper so you can see that. And you see how cool that is. It's cool. Now, this is the back of the paper we colored earlier. That is normal. Do not freak out if you see that. Um, so there's that. And then here's a card. Let me zoom back out. So this is a card that I created uh, maybe last week, a week ago, where this is heat embossed on vellum, and I colored um, the leaves and the bird, and then I actually colored the background of the vellum in gray, and so there is that technique. Okay, um, also you can color, don't forget you can color cutouts, you know, like your die cuts or your punched out things too, um, and that gives you a really pretty soft look against a white background. All right, so hopefully um, that hopefully you learned something about the Stamping Blends. I love these markers. I really hope Stamping Up comes out with a lot more colors. I'd love all of the family colors if possible. I love these markers. Um, I've been having a great time with them, so I encourage you to check them out, and uh, thank you guys for watching today. All right, bye.